In the spring of 2010, in Independence, Missouri, father, husband, and well-respected member of the community, Randy Stone, was found shot to death. He had been in the office of the family business. Notes for his errands and activities planned for his church sat on a notepad on the desk. As the community mourned and tried to make sense of his tragic death, rumors began circulating about who could have been responsible. And buried secrets, hidden for years, made their way to the surface. Hi everyone, I'm Kevin and welcome to Just Thought Lounge. At JTL, we deliver serious, well-balanced coverage of the cases that really make you think. If that sounds like your type of true crime, then you've come to the right place. Today, we're taking a look at a case that is as devastating as it is scandalous. Let's take a look. Randy Stone and his future wife, Teresa, grew up together in Kansas City, Missouri. Both families were devoted Christians and active in the Baptist church. After graduating from high school, Randy joined the United States Marine Corps. Returning home from duty in the spring of 1990, Randy had a particular young woman on his mind, Teresa. The couple began dating that March, and by October of that same year, they were married. A year later, they welcomed a son, Michael, and two years after that, they had a daughter, Miranda. Life for the Stones in Independence, Missouri appeared to be a pleasant one. They were embraced by the community at the New Hope Baptist Church and took part in its operations. Randy, who owned his own small insurance company, was the minister of records at the church. He oversaw the money and where it was going. Teresa sang in the choir and volunteered where she could. Through the Stones' many church activities, the couple grew close to the new pastor, David Love, who had arrived in his role at the relatively young age of 38. Pastor Love and his wife Kim had three children. After roughly 14 years of marriage, Teresa had been an active and loving stay-at-home mom for years. She had also joined Randy at the insurance office, supporting him with the family business. Randy was popular around town, and the Stones were well-known and loved members of the community. In 2004, Teresa announced that their family was growing again. She was pregnant. Michael and Miranda were approaching their teenage years, so the timing was a bit of a surprise. Adding to the unexpected nature of this happy accident was that Randy had agreed to a vasectomy years earlier. He should not have been able to have more children. Nonetheless, Randy remained loyal to his wife and assumed it was his child. Unfortunately, the joy would not continue. Teresa miscarried. In the aftermath, she struggled emotionally and sought support from her church. More specifically, Teresa sought the comfort and advice of the church pastor, David Love. Their counseling sessions increased, meeting unfailingly two to three times a week. Meanwhile, Teresa withdrew from Randy. She was distancing herself from her husband, behavior that Randy attributed to mourning for their lost child. He too sought the guidance and support of his pastor. The two began to meet every morning, discussing anything and everything, including the trials and joys of life. According to family, Randy admired Pastor Love. He even wrote in a self-help book that David Love was one of the most influential people in his life, an advisor and a close friend. In early 2010, however, the relationship between Randy and the pastor took a turn. Randy discovered an issue with the church's finances. In his capacity as the minister of records and a member of the church's finance committee, Randy had been going over the church's books. And what he discovered were missing funds. Checks for missing money showed Brother Love's signature. On March 17, 2010, Randy sent Pastor Love an email he said he did not agree with what the pastor was doing with the church's finances. The pastor would not admit any wrongdoing, but Randy resigned his position with the church. He did not take his allegations any further, but he did tell the pastor that he was removing his family from the congregation. 
Two weeks later, on the 31st of March, Teresa arrived at the insurance office to find her husband on the floor behind his desk. There was blood, and he was non-responsive. Teresa told the 911 operator that there was blood coming from Randy's ear, but she characterized the injuries as a supposed accident. He must have fallen, she said. When police responded to the scene, they rapidly came to a different conclusion. Randy Stone had been shot, and he did not survive. Investigators found no sign of a struggle, and cash had been left on his desk. They quickly came to believe that this was not a robbery, but a homicide. The gunshot was point blank, and there was a spent casing from a 40 caliber pistol. They further determined that the gun that was used was his own. Usually the gun was kept locked away and accessible only to Randy. There was one other particularly notable clue. In the trash bin next to Teresa's desk, investigators pulled out a handful of torn up pieces of paper. Assembling them back together, they revealed a note, or rather, a love letter. It was addressed to Teresa with the title, Happy Birthday, Love. The text went on to state, I am not in control of things yet, but when we are fully together, your birthday will always be exciting. The note was left unsigned, perhaps an indication that whoever wrote it would obviously be known to Teresa. But investigators knew immediately that Randy Stone was not the letter's author. A pad of paper off his desk with a series of small reminders displayed at a glance that his handwriting was not a match to the letter. So who was Teresa's admirer? And was this linked to the murder of Randy Stone? Police believed that the murderer was someone personally close to Randy. The circumstances suggested a targeted attack, not a random one. So they attended his funeral with audio recording equipment in hand. The killer was likely to be amongst those attending, and there was a chance that conversations, statements, or behaviors may reveal a lead. At the service, Pastor Love delivered a stirring eulogy. He empathized with the mourner's confusion and grief over the surprise loss of such a good man. We sit here today and we weep, not just because of the separation from our loved one, but because of all the questions that death brings. Questions like, why? Why him? Why now? Without answers, death seems so cold. And the body here and all the flowers, the things gathered around, we say, but we anticipated he would grow old. We anticipated that we'd do more things together. What's with the word anticipation and death being swallowed up in victory? How could this be good at all? While the Stone family and the church community continued to grieve, police continued their investigation. This included, of course, speaking with everyone who had been close with Randy. When Teresa Stone first sat down with police, her demeanor was atypical. She was not behaving or responding in the way that law enforcement had come to expect from a grieving widow. Regardless, detectives were aware that appearances can be deceiving, and people can act strangely, particularly under extreme circumstances. But Teresa's demeanor was not the only red flag. She also provided law enforcement with an airtight alibi for the time period surrounding the murder. She recalled the details with miraculous clarity. She could recount her movements down to the minute. She could produce all of her receipts. And then there was the question of the mysterious love letter. This is made written about had a birthday and all that. It's about this big. It was all tore up. I totally forgot about it, to be honest with you. I just found it yesterday. Okay. I kind of had a sacred admirer. It was left um, on my car door. Who's a secret admirer? I, I, I don't know who he is. Uh, I've never gotten another note from him, ever. No calls. I have nothing yeah. to hide okay. at all. Detectives asked Teresa more than once if she and her husband Randy were ever separated. She referenced a recent problem with pornography the couple worked through. Other than that, she described her nearly 20 years of marriage as joyful and happy. There was no evidence to directly implicate Teresa in her husband's death. At that point, there was only suspicious behavior. But 
there was more of this to come. A friend of Randy's, Robert Davis, told investigators that Teresa came to visit him the night of her husband's death. She appeared calm and collected and only wanted to know about how to collect her husband's life insurance policy. Robert found it odd. It wasn't even 24 hours after Randy had been killed, he told investigators. Randy, in the insurance business himself, had taken out two policies, totaling approximately $800,000. Could this have been a motive for murder? Law enforcement later found that Randy had altered the beneficiary information on both policies, from his wife to his two children. They also discovered that Teresa was unaware of this change. Speaking with more friends of the Stones, investigators also caught wind of a curious rumor circulating around the New Hope Baptist Church, that Teresa Stone and Pastor Love were having an affair. I think it was the worst kept secret in the church. Pastor Love had arrived at the crime scene shortly after emergency responders and the police. Of course he would be there, as someone known to be close to Randy and the Stone family. Police asked him into the station for a chat. The pastor agreed. However, he was not open to an extended discussion. David Love requested an attorney, and the interview ended. But investigators were far from finished with Brother Love. Police obtained a search warrant and found evidence on the pastor's computer at least evidence of an affair. They found pictures and emails sent to Teresa about starting a life together. I long for the touch of your hand as you walk by, and the twinkle in your pretty blue eyes as you smile at me. You are my doll, he wrote. There were indications that the two planned to be married, the purchase of an engagement ring, wedding plans in a file made to appear as if Teresa was compiling information for her daughter. In their correspondence, the lovers also addressed their relationships. David Love reminded Teresa Stone of the biblical king David, who orchestrated the death of Bathsheba's husband so he could take her as his wife. And God still blessed him, David told Teresa. Teresa replied, if God wants us to be together, God will make it happen. By the time Teresa sat down for another interview with detectives, they had uncovered and sorted through a seemingly endless pile of correspondence between the married lovers. Ten years worth, in fact. What we understand both admitted to there being an affair that had been going on for about ten years. I thought he was a good father and husband, but maybe he wasn't a good husband, I don't know. While working through thousands of personal phone records, police discovered prepaid cell phones Teresa and David had used to communicate. These may have stayed under the radar if the couple had not also used them, on occasion, to phone directly to their regular phone lines. The phone data revealed more than just heartfelt text messages and wedding plans. On the morning of Randy Stone's murder, investigators discovered that the phone belonging to David Love pinged off of a tower only a few miles away from Randy's insurance office. Teresa received a text message which read, Urgent! Do not go to the office by yourself. Ignoring the instruction, Teresa arrived to find her husband dead on the office floor. Teresa Stone was confronted with the phone data and asked yet again about the torn love letter discovered in her trash bin. At first, Teresa claimed that the cell phones were only to hide her counseling sessions with the pastor. His wife Kim was uncomfortable with the amount of support her husband had given to Teresa over the years. By that time, investigators had uncovered too much incriminating information. She could no longer claim ignorance, though at first she tried. That's not jiving. This was a planned killing. No. <laughs> it was a planned premeditated killing, and more than one person was involved. I have told you everything that happened on that day. Well, I'm telling you that... I have they the have seeds to show you. My daughter was with me. Teresa's excuses did not hold up. She crumbled under the pressure of questioning. The widow admitted to the affair, but insisted that David had nothing to do with the murder. Teresa also came clean on the sordid details, including her surprise pregnancy. Was there ever a time when you became pregnant with David's child? Yeah. That was a long time ago, wasn't it? 
Yeah, it was about six years ago, actually. Teresa told police that she had been wanting to break off the affair for a long time, but was afraid. She told family and friends that she let David Love give the eulogy at her husband's funeral because she was scared of his reaction if she refused. Then there was the 911 call. Investigators knew that David Love had texted a warning to Teresa before she arrived at the office. They also knew from phone records that 911 was not her first call after discovering her husband. First, she called her mother. On that call, Teresa was not confused about what had happened. She told her mother that Randy had been shot. Who told you that he'd been shot? How did you know he'd been shot? And why didn't you tell us? You're not being truthful with each other. I didn't You're know. You're not being truthful. Okay. I, he sent me a text and told me. Who did? Say it. Teresa broke down and told police that David had come to her home later that night and in her bedroom had revealed everything to her. He told Teresa how he had entered the office, aimed, and fired. He said he, he said he walked in the office and he just aimed and didn't even look. So he said he pulled the trigger? In an attempt to capture Pastor Love again making a confession to Teresa, the investigators had her place a call to her now former flame. The call was recorded. This is Teresa. Hi. Um, we need to talk. Okay. Yes, now. I want to know why. I want to know why. Teresa, why what? You know what? I need to know why you killed my husband. I need to know. The pastor refused to admit anything over the phone but he didn't need to. A Ford Taurus was seen driving in the area when the murder was thought to have taken place. Pastor Love had been driving his son's Taurus since he had received a DUI and could not drive it himself. His warning text message to Teresa and cell phone location data corroborated the subsequent confession to Teresa. It was more than enough for an arrest. After a search warrant had been issued on David Love's home, followed by his church, he left Missouri and moved to South Carolina. He was arrested there in November 2010 after a Jackson County grand jury indicted him on charges of first-degree murder and armed criminal action. After only a few hours behind bars, David Love placed a call to his wife, Kim. His affair was a poorly kept secret, and his wife seemed to be well aware of what her husband had been up to. On the call, she asked him repeatedly about the murder charge did you do it? The pastor would have been aware that the call was being recorded. Again, he said nothing. But what Kim did not know was that Randy was not the only target in Teresa and David's plans for a new life together. In the weeks following the murder, Teresa had confessed to another pastor, whom she trusted in West Virginia, that the plan was left unfinished. They had also discussed killing Kim. David Love had proposed that he break his wife's neck then place her in a car and roll her down a hill to stage an accident. Free of their spouses, they would collect Randy's life insurance, pay David Love's debts, and start a new life together. In November 2011, facing a mountain of evidence pointing to his guilt, the 51-year-old pastor took a plea deal for second-degree murder. Mr. Love took accountability for his actions. The family did not have to go through the uh, trials and the rigors of that, and, but they were able to hear Mr. Love and uh, take accountability. So that is a good outcome. Are focusing on that second case, and we um, that will restrict us from what questions we can answer this morning. Um, justice has yet to be served on that case, and we intend to see justice served across the board. The case against Teresa as a co-conspirator in Randy's murder continued to build after the pastor admitted his guilt. And several months later, in the spring of 2012, Teresa Stone also gave her confession. 
For the Stone family, particularly his mother, Clara, it was a harder pill to swallow. Teresa had been family. It, it's kind of like she was a split personality type. You know, that's not the Teresa I knew. And it, and it, you know, we kept saying, no, she couldn't, no, she couldn't. We was in denial for a very long time. I love Teresa. But I just wanted her to at least get enough time to sit there and think, was it worth it? You know, why not just get a divorce? At least I'd have my son and the kids would have their father. Teresa pled guilty to conspiracy to commit murder, a Class B felony that would carry a sentence of 5 to 15 years. This potential term was not nearly enough for some of Randy's loved ones. This woman takes my cousin's life, a Christian, a good man, and they're talking about 10 years? I don't, I don't, I just don't understand the law. I personally believe that she's the one who left the door unlocked. Let preacher love know where the gun was at. So she had a lot to do with it. The extent of what Teresa knew and how much she contributed to the plot to kill her husband was revealed at her sentencing hearing. She's motivated by her own greed and by her own gain. She wanted the perfect life with David Love, no matter the cost. She had admitted to telling David Love where and how to access Randy's gun. Her correspondence with the pastor was also submitted for consideration. We'll talk about Randy's guns. We'll talk about taking care of Randy so that they could be together. We'd use uh, verbiage like one shot to the head could take care of things. Teresa's two children, Michael and Miranda, both spoke on their mother's behalf. These calls for mercy likely held more sway than those made by Teresa herself. We need her, and I can't stand the thought of losing my mom after I've already lost my dad. The past two years, we've grown amazingly close as a family, and me and my sister both need her very much. My dad was extremely hard, but losing my mom would be harder. If I could do anything to change them, I would, but I can't. You today to show mercy on my case. I will do anything I have to do to pay my debt, Your Honor. Teresa was handed an eight year prison sentence. David Love is currently serving a life sentence. He will be eligible for parole in 2036. His wife Kim divorced him and remarried. She has stated that she holds no animosity towards either her ex-husband or Teresa Stone. She has moved on. Teresa has since been released from prison. She is reported to be living in the Kansas City area with a new partner. Randy Stone is remembered as an honorable Marine, a loving family man, and a faithful member of New Hope Baptist Church. And that was the tragic story of Randy Stone the pastor he admired, and his unfaithful wife. Thanks for watching. I'm Kevin. This is Just Thought Lounge, and I'll see you in the next one.